Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is third lecture of string algorithm series and in this lecture we are going to study about polynomial rolling hashes. So let's get started. First, introduction. So a uh, primary goal is to be able to compare two string of length n for equality in uh, efficiently. So what we are going to do is that we'll be converting both of the strings uh, we will be calculating the hash values of both of the strings and then calculating them if we have hash values of those then uh, comparing two strings by hash values is constant time operation this may seem uh, un, uh, I mean it may seem like we don't need hashing because we are already spending big of n time to calculate hash values which is correct I mean uh, we are spending big of n time that is correct to calculate hash but it is not a useless technique because remember KMP algorithm completely depends on hashing technique for its implementation so just stick to the lecture uh, for this and the next lecture and you will know why string hashing is so important I'll be showing you some problems that we can solve using string hashings and you'll be amazed by the applications of string hashing so don't just uh, judge this algorithm or this technique just by uh, looking at the scenario that is in front of you now we have a bigger picture to cover so let's complete one or two lectures and some problems then judge it so uh, this was about the introduction so basically we'll be using polynomial loading hashes to calculate hash values of the string and in this lecture we are going to study about polynomial rolling hashes its implementation in C++ and how this works so polynomial rolling hashes so what is polynomial rolling hashes so polynomial ro uh, polynomial rolling hash is one of the uh, many hashing functions and I have already explained what uh, a, a, a hash function does it takes input it takes string as input and generates uh, hash value of it so polynomial rolling hash works like this so you you give string as input and the hash value is as uh, the first character plus first char character multiplied by p raised to the power zero where p is certain prime and uh, I mean zeroth char character times p raised to the power zero plus first character times p raised to the power one and so on till uh, n minus one -th character times p raised to the power n minus one modulo m uh, for now just ignore modulo m I'll be explaining you why do we need modulo m I mean why do we even need to take modulo and this whole expression can be uh, uh, also written down like this so this is your polynomial hash and uh, hash function and this is how for a given string s its hash value is calculated now if I show you this with an example to make things even clear uh, let's take coding as an example so if I pass coding as the input string so the polynomial hash uh, I mean the hash value of the string coding will be c raised uh, c times p raised to power 0 plus o times p raised to power 1 plus d times uh, p raised to power 2 and so on till g times uh, p raised to power 5 where p uh, is a prime number and usually the value of p, p is taken as a number just greater than the character set so currently I'm assuming that we have a char our character set comprises of all the small letter English alphabet so we have 26 different characters from A to Z right so P should be any prime number greater than 26 like it can be uh, 29 or 31 uh, whatever you can choose so this is how you will be calculating uh, hash value of a string coding now one thing you should uh, consider is that C is a character it's not an integer even though in most of the programming languages uh, when you multiply character with an integer like we are doing here C times P raised to power 0 uh, it will not throw an error or exception because a character itself is uh, can be considered as integer it is like uh, I guess it is 8 bit integer I guess so most of the programming languages won't throw any error in not C++ or Java at least uh, the rest I don't know so still 
each of these characters that we have, like for all of the characters from A to Z, we'll be mapping them to integers. So uh, A I'm mapping to 1, B, B I'm mapping to 2, and C I'm mapping to 3, and so on till Z. So you can see I'm starting from 1, I'm not starting A with 0. So first thing, when, you, when uh, we are using C, so instead of C, we'll be using its mapped value, which is 3. 3 times P raised to the power 0 plus O, whatever value, uh, whatever the map value of O is. So the characters that will be assigned integer values from starting from 1. Uh, why I'm not starting from 0? See, if I start, uh, if I take A as 0 and I, I start from 0 and take uh, and assign each character value from 0, so A would be given value 0, B would be given value 1 and so on. So what would happen is that the problem with that approach is that if you calculate uh, hash value of a it would be 0 right hash value of a a would be 0 hash value of a a a would be 0 so you see these are collisions because all of the uh, no matter how many times you take you take a if there is a string of n number of uh, which only contains a right so no matter how many times there are a its hash value is still going to be 0 and that that is a problem because each time uh, whenever you are uh, inserting a where you are calculating uh, hash value of a or a, a or a, any number of a it would result into collision that is why we don't start from zero we start from one so we'll be mapping these character accordingly uh, so that uh, instead of these character we'll be using these values so for a i'll be using one b i'll be using two and so on so this is how i'll be calcul calculating hash value so uh, and yeah this i have already explained p will be taken as prime number and its size should be greater than or equals to the uh, character set if you are using only small letter uh, characters then we have 26 character from a to z if you are considering uh, small letter as well as capital letters then we have uh, 52 different characters then uh, p should be greater than or equals to 52 and it should be a prime and that is for sure right so this is an example let's just apply a, a better example so that uh, i'm also using the values of the character so for a i'm using one for b i'm using two and for c i'm using three so the hash value of this would be and i'm assuming p to be five so one times p raised power zero plus two uh, uh, second character times p raised power one plus third character times p raised power two and the hash value of abc will come out to be 90 and this is how you'll be calculating a uh, hash now one thing you can note here is that i'm not, not taking modulo here right uh, while we have to do that and i'll be explaining you why do we need that so the question is why do we need modulo see the problem is uh, we are taking uh, we are we are assigning each string a hash value and hash value we are calculating using polynomial hash and the problem with polynomial hash is that uh, its value increases uh, exponentially because here you can see each time you are increasing the power of p by 1 right so the value of polynomial hash increases exponentially so if you uh, assume p to be 11 or uh, even the 10 character string won't be able uh, the value the hash value of 10 even 10 character string would be so large that it, that it won't fit in a uh, 32 bit integer or uh, 30 for 32 bit integer the range is roughly around 10 to the power 9 for 64 bit integer uh, the range is roughly around uh, i guess 10 to the power 19 for for 32 bit integer is 10 to the power 9 roughly and for 64 bit integer it is roughly uh, 10 to the power 19 so you see uh, even the 10 or 20 uh, even the 10 character string won't be uh, the hash value of 10 uh, character string is not uh, the integer integer variable won't be able to hold the value of even a string which is having only 10 characters similarly if you are using 64 bit integer basically long long then a string which is having only 20 characters its hash value would be so long uh, so large that it won't fit inside a 64 bit integer i'm assuming p to be 11 here usually we take p to be 29 or 31 something around that so uh, you see because of these problems we have to use modulo 
and that is why we are using modulo yes there will be collision because of that but if we won't use that uh, the data that we will be using because of the overflow won't be consistent and that is why we need modulo now uh, the question is why the size of i mean why p should be greater than or equals to the uh, size of the character set see uh, i'll be showing uh, i'll be explaining you with an example only uh, suppose i have chosen p to be 11 right uh, i'm working with only capital letter uh, characters which are again 26 only so uh, ideally p should have been greater than or equals to 26 but i'm using p to be 11 which is of course smaller than the size of the character set so what would happen here you see the hash value of l will come out to be 12 uh, 12 times 11 raised to power 0 or uh, the hash value of aa would come out to be 1 times 11 raised to power 0 plus 1 times 11 raised to power 1 which is 1 plus 11 is equals to 12 so you see we we haven't passed uh, we haven't calculated all hash values of first and sec of uh, one and two character length strings and we already have a collision here Right. so this is what would happen if you choose l to be smaller than the size of the character set uh the the collision the, the size of the uh, the number of collision will increase and we do not want that right and that is why we'll be choosing p to be greater than or equals to the size of the character set now final thing c plus plus implementation of the algorithm how we'll be calculating rolling hashes uh using I mean what is the implementation of it so here uh, if I show you the program so what I'm doing here uh, each time I'm reading a key if key is only a period a dot then I'm stopping otherwise I'm printing the uh, hash value of that key where key is a input string so uh, let me just show you just a second for example if I calculate for a uh, let me increase the font size yes if I'm calculating hash value of a it would come out to be one of course let's say a b b a so these are the hash values now let let me show you how we are calculating here so this get hash function will return the hash value of uh, of the give input string lli is basically long long in here you can see instead of writing ll uh, i mean long long everywhere i'm using the shortcut lli which i have defined here so uh, the hash value is defined to be zero prime number i'm using uh, p i'm using 31 and modulo i'm using 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so how am i calculating initially the first character times p raised to power 0 right p raised to power 0 is 1 so this will keep track of the power of p so p raised to power 0 is 1 that is why i'm initialized with 1 so the first character needs to be multiplied with p raised to power 0 initially it is p raised to power 0 so value which is 0 initially value is equal to value plus uh this is the way to convert the character first of all this is for each loop so what it would do if the input string in key if the input string is like a b c initially uh, when the for loop runs first time ch would be one when the for loop runs second time ch, uh, ch would be b and so on so this is for loop i hope you understand it already so what is happening here i'm reading character by character converting them into their respective integer values a is mapped to one b is mapped to two c is mapped to uh, i mean three and so on and then multiplying p uh, power of p right and taking modulo what is happening here initially uh, the first character will get multiplied by uh, p raised to power 0 which is 1 right uh, p power is already 1 after its multiplication next time we need to multiply with p raised to power 1 right it is p raised to power 0 to calculate p raised to power 1 what you would do you would multiply p again into this and that is exactly what i'm doing here so the next time uh, the next character would be multiplied by p raised to power 1 and again i'm calculating the next power so that i can multiply in the next iteration with the next power of p and that is exactly what is happening here and finally i'm returning the hash value of the string so this is uh, your polynomial rolling hash uh, about the mode i haven't explained you uh, the larger the mode uh, the lesser your collision will be but at the same time you need to make sure that you don't choose mode uh, so big that it results into uh, integer overflow again because here what we are doing we are multiplying this character to this character and also i mean we are multiplying this to this 
and these two are also getting multiplied and after that you are cal calculating modulo so if you choose modulo to be something like 2 to the power 64 so it is possible that these two values are already 2 to the power 64 i mean after multiplying multiply uh, after multiplying it many times at some point it is possible that the these two values i mean both of them can't be uh, to the power 64 because p we have already defined it is possible that this is nearly uh, around 2 to the power 64 when you multiply it with 31 it will result into greater than num uh, greater number which is uh, a number which is greater than 2 to the power 64 why i am uh, saying 2 to the power 64 again because i am talking about 64 bit integer so when you multiply it with uh, this p it would go beyond the range of 64 bit integer and this would result into overflow and that is why more the integer that you are choosing for modulo should be big but small enough so that your multiplication doesn't result into overflow of the data type that you are using so this is how you calculate rolling hashes in the upcoming videos in the upcoming lecture i'll be taking one or two uh, example problems that we will be solving using hash values and i'll be providing this code in the description of the video for your reference and uh, uh, the same technique will be used in kmp algorithm so this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching if you have any doubt query or suggestion you can post it down in the comment section so thank you guys for watching and till the next video drops keep coding thank you